The important thing about pacifist certification is that it tracks back to the Pacifist Institute in Germany. So this is yeah. not this is a, a traceable standard, um, and certifiers must have, have served an internship with the Pacifist Institute before they can undertake certification. Yes. And their certification is checked back through yes. the Pacifist Institute. Usually, a certifier they do a, a three-week internship, but they have to have experience of low-energy construction before they. Um, can undertake, you know, you have to take the training. Um, once they are certifying, their first certification will always be checked by Pacifist Institute, and then after that, annually, a number of their certifications will be checked to ensure that the quality is maintained. Yes. Now, our certifier in this case is uh, Peter Warm of Warm Associates. Um, Peter um, trained with Pacifist Institute last year. What he has to do is to start again. Yes. So although we've done the whole PHPB modelling of the, the building, yes. it's actually going to have to start again and um, start with a fresh copy of, of PHPB, put all the data in. So that data will be the plans, yeah. elevations, yeah. obviously. It will be the details yeah. of all the junctions which we've been through earlier. With the, with the thermal modelling, the therm modelling done on all those details. Yes, yeah. Yeah, all the therm modelling. It will be uh, photographic evidence. Yeah. It will maybe be invoice evidence, invoice that you've actually used the materials you've said you're going to use. No, certificates for things like the windows, because they have yeah. to. We have to give those values to uh, a urinal value. And then of course we've got the all important air tightness, both pressurised and depressurised by a recognised body. Once it's approved, then we get certification through Pacifist Institute. Bill, what do you think has been the hardest bit for you, apart from waiting for the air time to test the way? <laughs> you, you, you've been the guys actually been on the ground, um, making, I mean, okay, Jude, yeah. our, our site manager, has been the guy on the ground, but you've been overseeing the whole project. You know, I've been mm -hmm. in the background, supporting mm -hmm. you so technically. What do you think has been the most challenging bit of it? Well, really, what I've got to say is, that, and this is qualified, how easy it's been in terms of build, buildability. I think you, you were actually, you were dreading it, weren't you, in some ways. And we, when we were thinking about this, and, you know, first planning it two years ago, yes. nobody, that we knew, virtually nobody we knew of, had even thought about doing it in the UK. And we thought this was so challenging. Yes. Um, yes. And it is. It's a really challenging yes. standard, I think. And so of course... Um, most people didn't think that we could do it with the cavity wall construction. No, so we were also sort of swimming against the tide. Yeah. We were swimming against the tide. There were lots of people advised against it. Yeah. They thought that um, to get the air tightness layer mm. in the wet plaster inside, if you like, in that, uh, in that point in the building was just going to be too difficult. Mm. I think it was the air tightness that was the most challenging. Yeah. Where well, if you if you designed your Detailing your thermal bridges and yes. or designed out your thermal bridges, and you, you, you know, you've got your cavity wall with a lot of insulation. Mm. In a way, you know, you just got to build it. <clears throat> it may not be that easy. There were some areas, but but in the end, the air tightness is a bit you just don't know until you test it. Yeah, and we did. And if it's way out, it's too late. <laughs> yes. And actually, what we did, of course, we only wrote into the contract we'd achieve an air tightness of three, three at fifty pascals. Yeah, well, of course, we've got more like point three, ten yeah. times better than that. Yeah. We signed the contract at three because that is deemed the point where MVHR becomes economically efficient. But the, the striking thing apart from the air tightness has been when you've been managing the, the job, you're mm. coming back and saying that it is going very well, it's yes. very easy and actually a lot easier than, than a lot of ordinary building jobs where you've got to sort of sort out problems on site. But we think that the reason for that was that we put so much effort mm. into the detailing before we started, yeah. far more than that we would have done in the normal, that size of contract. Yeah. Um, because usually a one-off house, you tend to have pretty sketchy plans. You certainly don't have details of junctions in the way that we had to um, um, engineer. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's one, of the, cause that's one of the lessons, isn't it? Yeah. You can't make things up on site. You've got, everything's got to be sorted out beforehand. Yes. And once you've done it once, yes. you haven't got to, you've got that detail yeah. the next time you do it. But of so course, from a wider context, I'm hoping that we've just opened up the debate about the vernacular uh, way of building in this country. 
Well, I think you know we have. I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, the blog itself is, 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 yeah. is a huge amount of interest and debate and yes. a lot of interest coming back to us about the cavity wall construction, which, yes. you know, we had said, well, a lot of people said that cavity wall construction wasn't the way forward. No. And we're not saying that it's the only the way right. forward, or even the best way forward, but it's certainly an option, an option. that people can, yeah. take, can adopt. I think before it's being assumed that it probably wasn't really an option. Thank you.